Hi, I'm Ibra, and I'm making an RPG game called Stranded Away, where you play as a post-apocalyptic survivor with no memory in a world filled with junk robots who mostly ignores you. And throughout the game, you'll cover more and more about that world. My main inspiration are some of my favorite titles, like Harvest Moon, Legend of Zelda, and Valheim. And since I always like watching devlogs, I decided to start my own documenting the process. But let me tell you first about myself. I'm an artist living in Serbia with a passion for video games and anime. When I was a kid, I used to create flash games, if you remember those. They were mostly a simple endless runner or 2D platformer like this one, with me jumping around in the old city of Damascus. It was then when I fell in love in game development. Fast forward today, and I've worked with some of the coolest names in video games, such as Obsidian Entertainment, Playrix, and even worked on League of Legends 2D animation. But something was always missing. I longed for that feeling of pure joy and excitement that I used to get from creating games just for fun. But back in the days, creating a game worth playing required an army of developers. But recently, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and devlogs and playing amazing games like Short Height and Stardew Valley that have been made by a single developer while they are still extremely beautiful, fun to play with a great storyline. So I felt inspired and said, okay, if I'm going to do this, how should I start? And most importantly, what engine I should start with? Will it be Unity or Unreal Engine? I did have a little bit of experience with Unity before, but I always felt it was more for 2D games than 3D. And before making a decision, I joined the workshop by Epic Games to test Unreal Engine a bit more. And to be honest, I was blown away with all the possibilities, especially with the node-based programming system. So with it, I started creating my own game, Stranded Away. Stranded Away is an isometric top-down 3D game that blends the best part of Zelda and Valheim. You play as a character stranded in an abandoned world where you have to craft tools, weapons, and potions to get through the quest that you find along the way. The core gameplay is simple. Explore an area, fight minions and mine its resources, play its mini-games that leads up to a boss fight, defeat the boss to get missing ingredients, which can be used to craft an item to unlock new part of the map, and repeat. And for the main game story, I have an idea of how it's gonna progress. But I don't want to spoil anything for you just yet, so stay tuned for future videos where I might drop some hints. So with that, I jumped right into it, and started working on the project, and decided to do all the game assets myself. So I tried to minimize the amount of free to use library packages that exist in Unreal Engine market in my game. Because when watching all those great devlogs, the art style feels very repetitive, like a variation of the same game, even though with different gameplay mechanics. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Plus, this is what I do for a living, especially regarding 3D environments. So I should take advantage of that. And another thing, from all the devlogs and YouTube videos that talked about solo game development, most of them emphasize the idea of making a prototype. The idea is to make a few minor games in order for you to learn and gain some skills regarding how to make the real thing. But unfortunately, I didn't listen. I thought that in order for me to have a good game and distinguish myself among all other indie games, I needed to take advantage of my art experience. So despite all the advice, I decided to start with the character design. I mean, why not start with the thing that's going to be front and center for my entire game? right? Well, it wasn't quite smart for me to do so, since eventually I had to change and adjust the character multiple times for it to fit specific technical requirements that I didn't even know they existed before reaching that point. But, let's say, I've learned a lot of things in the process. So first, collect references. Cool. Second, use Trello to organize your ideas. That's a good start. From there, I made a huge reference board in order to have quick access to the design ideas to get inspired properly while working on the character. And I quite like the cute Japanese art style, so I decided to go with that vibe and begin experimenting with a couple of designs. I tried the idea of broken scuba diving hat, and I knew that I needed to add some secondary element to it, like a flower or an antenna or something, basically just to give a secondary motion that overlaps with the character animation, which also adds a sense of physics and life to the character. That's why we see most games and superhero characters wear capes or hoodies just for it to flap in the air and have this beautiful overlapping motion on top of the character animation. 
but while working on it, I figured that a round bulky hat was going to cover most of the character. Since we'll be using top-down camera in the game, leaving the player with only a huge ball with a flower flapping in the air to look at all the time. So I kept trying different designs, like the Arabian Aladdin type of character for example, but then I finally landed on this one which I'm happy with. Until of course, after countless hours, days and months working on it, I discovered that the new hat itself looked like a dot again from top-down view, which meant that after spending time modeling, sculpting the hat, as well as figuring out how to simulate hair physics in Unreal Engine, I had to scrap everything and redo it all over again. But okay, okay, it would be fine. Deep breath. At this point, I had a sketch of my character, so I colored it with basic colors just for me to have a sense of the general vibe of which I know later going to be changed. But still though, it's good to have a solid starting point before progressing with modeling. From there, the challenge was turning the 2D design into 3D model, which was really challenging for me. I mean I have experience in modeling 3D environments and using sculpting tools, but when it comes to sculpt something organic like a character, it was totally out of my reach. I had to go through a lot of tutorials to know how the geometry should look like, for example the hands, ears and heads, and examine some other models from Unreal Engine libraries and try to study how the geometry flow should work, adding to that how to sculpt the body muscles without being over detailed and maintain the stylized vibe that I was planning for my game. Well, it was tough and took a lot of time, but at least I learned something new. And if you want to learn it yourself, I left links for all the helpful tutorials that I used making this character. And if you don't know how a sketch of a character transformed to 3D model, similar to the one that you can see in League of Legends for example, I'll try to explain it. This is our sketch. We are looking at it from the front view. We need another two sketches from the back and the side, which based on them we start modeling. And end up with this low poly model with no details. And in order for us to be able to texture it, we need to unwrap it, like the Santa Claus candy, so whatever we change in the UV map, it will automatically change the character texture. After that, we sculpt our 3D model to add all those juicy details and have what we call the high poly model. And then we transfer those details from the high poly to the low poly in the process called baking. And the end result will be a multiple UVs, which later we are going to use when working on texturing. But for now, our character will look like this without any coloring or painting. And that's it for my first devlog. I hope it wasn't very technical, but there was a ton of things that I couldn't add to this video because I didn't want it to be 10 hours long. And a tiny disclaimer, the state of the game now is a bit more advanced than it is in the devlog, but my plan cycle is to focus for 3 months on the production of the game and 1 month where I edit 3 devlogs, so I could publish them on a monthly basis. I can't wait to share my progress with all of you guys in the next update. And if you are interested in supporting the project, please take a moment and check my Patreon. Right now, Stranded Away is a one-person project and I'm working on it alongside my freelance job. So the more support I get for the game, the more time I can spend working on it. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you the next time. Bye.